so welcome back students today we do the pre organogenesis period or the first 14 days of life so you all know fertilization takes place in the ampulla of fallopian tube the spermatozoon enters the ovum the second meiotic division is completed and second polar body is extruded the head of the spermatozoon forms the male pronucleus while the ovum nucleus forms the female pronucleus each is having 23 chromosomes the pronuclei lose their nuclear membranes and the 23 chromosomes of male and female pronucleus get mixed up these 46 chromosomes undergo changes like a mitotic division forming a two celled structure and this is the two celled embryo so students note strictly speaking there is no single cell stage of the human embryo now then cleavage takes place what is cleavage process of subdivision into smaller cells so out of the two cells which are formed one divides first so that there is a three cell stage followed by four cell stage five cell stage and so on and ultimately a 16 cell structure is formed 72 hours after fertilization which is mulberry like and it is called a morula so if we take a section across the morula we find it is made up of an inner cell mass or embryo proper also called embryo blast surrounded by the outer layer of cells which are the future trophoblast and there is a zona pellucida which prevents implantation at an abnormal site now increased nutritional requirements are there so zona pellucida disappears and fluid enters into the morula from the uterine cavity and this fluid partially separates the cells of inner cell mass from the trophoblast cells as the fluid increases the morula acquires the shape of a cyst and this is called blastocyst which is formed on day 4 after fertilization after that implantation takes place this is again due to increased nutritional requirements so implantation takes place how it takes place the trophoblast cells have the ability to stick to and eat other cells so the blastocyst sticks to the uterine endometrium and gets implanted in it by day six after fertilization so the trophoblast cells they eat up the endometrial cells and this blastocyst gets burrowed inside the endometrium and in human beings the implantation is referred to as interstitial implantation because the implanted blastocyst is surrounded by endometrium on all the sides so in human beings the implantation is interstitial and it takes place by day six after fertilization after that bilaminar disc is formed from the inner cell mass the cells they differentiate into the flattened hypoblast cell layer the remaining cells of the inner cell mass they become columnar and form the epiblast layer so epiblast and hypoblast layers they are formed from the cells of the inner cell mass and this is called bilaminar disc which is formed by day 8 after fertilization so epiblast has got columnar cells and hypoblast has got flattened cells and these are derived from the inner cell mass cells then amniotic cavity is formed so this is a space uh, which appears and the amniogenic cells they they arise from the trophoblast cells so trophoblast cells give rise to the amniogenic cells and this space the amniotic cavity its roof is formed by amniogenic cells and floor is formed by the epiblast so this is the region of the amniotic cavity flattened cells arising from hypoblast spread and line inside the blastocyst cavity so you see here the flattened cells they are arising from the hypoblast and they are lining the inner aspect here and this is referred to as the Husser's membrane so flattened cells arising from hypoblast spread and line on the inner aspect of the blastocyst cavity now this primary yolk sac is formed and what is the function of primary yolk sac it transfers nutrients to embryo it's the early source of blood cells it produces primitive germ cells which give rise to future spermatogonia and oogonia. After that, the trophoblast cells which have given rise to the amnogenic cells, the trophoblast cells also give rise to the extra embryonic mesoderm. So you see these dotted structures here, that is the extra embryonic mesoderm. And from where it is arising, it is arising from the trophoblast cells. So trophoblast cells give origin to a mass of cells, extra embryonic mesoderm or primary mesoderm. It's called primary mesoderm because this is the first mesoderm to be formed. It is called extra embryonic because 
it lies outside the em embryonic disc so it is not intraembryonic it lies outside the embryonic disc so it is called extra embryonic mesoderm or primary mesoderm so extra embryonic mesoderm or primary mesoderm is represented by these dots and this is formed from trophoblast cells remember trophoblast cells also gave rise to the amniogenic cells so now what happens is with the formation of the extra embryonic mesoderm the trophoblast cells are separated from the walls of the amniotic cavity as well as from the yolk sac so you can make out how extra embryonic mesoderm or primary mesoderm is separating the trophoblast cells from the cells of the yolk sac and the amniotic cavity now a cavity appears in the extra embryonic mesoderm and this is called extra embryonic coelom so with the appearance of the extra embryonic coelom the extra embryonic mesoderm is split into the somatopleuric layer which is in contact with the trophoblast cells and a splanchnopleuric layer which is in contact with the cells of the yolk sac so extra embryonic coelom a cavity appears in the extra embryonic mesoderm and with its appearance the extra embryonic mesoderm is split into the somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm and the splanchnopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm which is in contact with the trophoblast cells and the cells of the yolk sac respectively so amniotic cavity gets attached to trophoblast by some mesoderm into which the extra embryonic coelom has not extended so you can make out here students that this whole you know these dots they are representing the extra embryonic mesoderm and this is the area where this green cavity has not extended so this is the future connecting stalk so this future connecting stalk is where the amniotic cavity gets attached to trophoblast by some mesoderm so amniotic cavity gets attached to trophoblast by some mesoderm into which the extra embryonic coelom has not extended and this is the area of the future connecting stalk so then we do the formation of the amnion amniogenic cells form the amnion so these cells are forming the wall of the amniotic cavity excluding the floor so you can make out here that the amnion encloses the embryo in a fluid filled amniotic sac so this is the fluid filled amniotic sac and this is the embryo so this sac contains amniotic fluid which protects the embryo from drying out so amniogenic cells they form the amnion and amnion encloses embryo in a fluid filled amniotic sac which protects the embryo from drying out now we do the formation of chorion chorion is formed from somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm inside so somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm inside and overlying trophoblast cells outside so somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm and overlying trophoblast cells they form the chorion so you can make out the chorion here this chorion cushions the embryo against mechanical shocks this is the fetal tissue which takes part in forming the placenta so placenta is chorion plus decidua decidua is the maternal tissue while chorion is the fetal tissue so uh, placenta has two components the chorion and decidua and the fetal component of the placenta is the chorion it cushions the embryo against mechanical shocks and it is formed from somatopleuric extra embryonic mesoderm and overlying trophoblast cells now we come to the formation of secondary yolk sac now with the appearance of the extra embryonic mesoderm and the cavity extra embryonic coelom in it the yolk sac becomes much smaller in size and it is lined by cuboidal cells and we now call it secondary yolk sac so primary yolk sac becomes secondary yolk sac with the appearance of extra embryonic mesoderm and a cavity in it which is called extra embryonic coelom its cells now become cuboidal and we call this yellow area as secondary yolk sac now we come to formation of prochordal plate uh, we have done that the upper layer towards the amniotic cavity is the epiblast while the lower layer is the hypoblast the cells of which are cuboidal so epiblast cells are columnar and hypoblast cells are they are cuboidal so the embryonic disc is composed of these two layers now at one area near margin of disc the cubical cells become columnar so some hypoblast cells which are cubical they have become columnar here and this area is referred to as the area of the prochordal plate 
Now this procaudal plate has a significance because it determines the central axis of the embryo. Now we are able to divide the embryo into right and left halves once we know that the procaudal plate has formed and it enables us to distinguish the future head and tail ends of the embryo. So where the procaudal plate is that is nearer to the head of the embryo. So it, it we are now able to divide the embryo into right and left halves and we also know which is the head end of the embryo and which is the tail end of the embryo with the appearance of the procaudal plate. What is the procaudal plate? It is that area of the hypoblast where the cuboidal cells have become columnar. Soon after formation of procaudal plate, some epiblast cells near tail end of disc begin to proliferate. So with the appearance of the procaudal plate, some uh, epiblast cells near the tail end of the disc begin to proliferate and they form an elevation that bulges into the amniotic cavity. This is called the primitive streak. Procaudal plate and primitive streak are formed by day 14 after fertilization. So students, we have done the first 14 days uh, of pregnancy today and they are referred to as the pre-organogenesis period as no organs are as yet recognizable. The anomalies produced by teratogens acting during this period usually result in death of the embryo. So with that, I finish my class today. If you require notes on this topic, you can inbox me at 9815542792. So till the next time we meet, it's bye from me now. Next time we will do the formation of the three germ layers. So we will do gastrulation. So thank you students. It's bye from me for now.